Welcome to the program. I'm Ali Moore. While the world has focused its attention on swine flu, a different epidemic has been sweeping parts of Australia with deadly consequences. The disease whooping cough has struck this year with a vengeance. Three babies have died and close to 19,000 cases have been reported. And doctors warn it could get a lot worse if parents don't vaccinate their children. This warning has reignited a fierce debate. The anti-vaccination group called the Australian Vaccination Network claims the inoculations are dangerous. But health professionals say that campaign is based on fear, not facts. Kirsten Murray reports. This is Dana. Dana, Dana who? Dana Elizabeth McCaffrey. Yeah. I just clearly remember, you know, sitting on the lounge after feeding her thinking, we've got everything we've wanted. The feeling could not get better than that. In February this year, the McCaffrey family became five. But Tony and David McCaffrey could not have predicted the danger their baby faced. Two weeks and four days or something. When Dana McCaffrey developed a runny nose, her parents weren't worried. But then they didn't know their child had been born during one of the worst whooping cough epidemics on record. James, turn around. Say hi. Still, no one suspected she could have the deadly disease. It would take four trips to the local GP before whooping cough was finally diagnosed. And within days, this baby was critically ill. It's just pure torture. You just... You see your precious, beautiful little baby. Every portion of their body is in pain. When they cough like that, their eyes just get wider and wider and they're just pleading with you to make it stop. It is horrible to watch. These babies survived. Dana McCaffrey didn't have a chance. Her tiny body couldn't withstand the pneumonia and aggressive bacterial toxins that set in. A priest came and baptised Dana. About five minutes later, uh, Dana went into cardiac arrest and um, the room was just full of people trying to save her and she passed away and they, they gave her weight, they gave her to us and we held her and uh, pulled all the wires and tubes out of her and nursed her little girl. Dana McCaffrey is one of three babies who've died across the country this year from whooping cough. And in the same week she passed away in Lismore Base Hospital, two other babies had to be airlifted to Brisbane for emergency treatment. That is something I, I hope I never see again, because each of those babies came close to death. There are still four cases a day, four notifications a day, still rolling through in this valley alone. Uh, so it hasn't gone away. It's protracted and we're not winning. Five months on, what haunts the McCafferys is that they didn't know they were living in a region with one of the lowest vaccination rates in the country. Since their daughter's death, they've discovered up to one in three children in their New South Wales North Coast community aren't vaccinated, three times less than the national average. I would never have ever considered asking someone if they've vaccinated their child. It's completely their business. and. Um, uh, I guess we've learnt the hard way that um, actually that choice does affect everybody around you. Karen, come on, come on in, come on in. Paediatrician Chris Ingle treated Dana McCaffrey in hospital and sees a clear link between the region's low vaccination rate and Dana McCaffrey's death. I mean, we've educated and educated and educated and it seems to fall on deaf ears. And in part of me, in my, in my mind, was, well, Dana was an accident waiting to happen. Doctors say mass immunisation has been the most effective public health strategy ever launched in Australia. Polio epidemics once struck with fierce consequences. More than a thousand died and tens of thousands more were paralysed. But when a vaccination was introduced in the 1950s, the disease was all but eradicated. The story is the same for many once common children's ailments like measles, mumps and meningitis. 
I'm Neddy the Needle. I can tell you all about that. But for some, there's fear and suspicion of the push to vaccinate. And the Internet's provided a global and pervasive forum for debate. Say no, Say no to the vaccine. The greatest lie ever told is that vaccines are safe and effective. There is such a huge business in pharmaceuticals. There are a huge range of toxins that are in vaccines, and many of them have no place in the human body. Mercury has no The stronghold of the anti-vaccination movement is based in the same neighbourhood as the McCaffrey's. But tonight, the group's president, Meryl Dorries, travelled to Adelaide, to warn parents of what she sees the potential dangers from vaccinating. Um, this is Robert, and he was, um, I think he was 12, when he was given the hepatitis B vaccine. And within 24 hours, um, he had that paralysis down his face. The Australian Vaccination Network says that boy's case isn't isolated, and the group's website has documented death and disability parents blame on vaccination. Everything from just the uh, minimal reactions like swelling at the site and fever, um, high-pitched screaming is very common, shock collapse, which is a floppy baby syndrome. Um, there can be autism, ADD and ADHD, which are both very common right now, um, which were almost unheard of 20, 30 years ago. They've been related to vaccinations. Meryl Dory says while Dana McCaffrey's death was a tragedy, she rejects low vaccination rates played any part. The mother of four has written about her own family's experience with whooping cough, describing it as a storm in a teacup which was treated with homeopathy. Just because someone is a doctor doesn't necessarily mean they're an expert on every area of medicine. Uh, and unless they've actually done some independent research into vaccination, they may not know more than the average parent who's read a few articles and a book or two about vaccinations. According to UNICEF, immunization averts more than two million deaths a year worldwide. But Dr. Chris Ingalls says the Australian Vaccination Network ignores this statistic. Their work is uh, negative, destructive and uh, has no scientific basis. Uh, I wish they weren't here because it, this is the battle we have that in some sections of the community up here it's almost fashionable not to vaccinate uh, as if it didn't matter and it does matter. I think most doctors really believe in vaccinations. They've been taught to believe in vaccinations and they haven't done a whole lot of research on their own. So. Um you got pretty used to being in the hospital, have you? Infectious disease specialist Professor Peter McIntyre says the Australian Vaccination Network manipulates medical research and statistics to argue its case. It's been a real characteristic of the anti-vaccine movement in Australia, claiming to be looking very extensively at the scientific evidence. If you're someone like me whose job it is to spend their time going through a lot of this evidence, then you realise that it really is a complete misinterpretation. It's a really difficult choice. I think there's a lot of information out there. A lot of it conflicts with each other. And I feel like I've made the best decision that I can at this point in time. OK, there you go. Kara Harding's a Brisbane mother of three struggling to make sense of the vaccination debate. She started vaccinating her first child but discontinued after questioning its safety. That doesn't mean I'm not considering vaccinating in the future. Um, when I do, I'll do it with a lot of thought and consideration. Yeah, it's a real conundrum to choose which, which way to go. Like, and I've just, my choice is to not vaccinate yet. Doctors concede there can be side effects, but argue the health risk of not vaccinating is far more dangerous. Seeing a, a, a baby, as the McCaffreys did, die of whooping cough is a terrible experience. Seeing a child die of measles is also very sad. Seeing a child die of tetanus, seeing a child have uh, a bacterial meningitis. All these diseases are very, very nasty. So making people aware of how dangerous these diseases were before vaccines were around, uh, I make no apologies for that. In an effort to protect the youngest and most vulnerable from catching whooping cough, Professor McIntyre is about to trial vaccinating newborns. Can you wait for a three year third born? I don't think you're 30. <laughs> the parents and grandparents of newborns, authorities are now offering free booster shots. 
to target those adults whose immunity would have waned since they were vaccinated as children. For the McCafferys, they're left wondering why not one health professional warned them of the whooping cough epidemic. As they await the outcome of a New South Wales Health Department investigation into their daughter's death, they hope lessons learnt will save others. People need a personal story to be able to associate with. Well, they've got a personal story, they've got ours. And I'm just asking the government to, to use it. Kirsten Murray with that report.